Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. The rocks, the water, and the land seem to be the only real survivors of the past. People are like a passing mist, even the most famous ones. But the dead leave behind remnants reminding us they were here and are worth remembering. Sometimes their stories are buried beneath the surface, and it takes a little digging to find out more about them. This is the Link Farm archaeological site. It is a mound group consisting of uh, four large platform mounds. There were once more mounds at the site, uh, but the largest four still exist. There's something about this protected property that seems to send a silent signal, stimulating curiosity and compelling people to come see for themselves. I spent a lot of time in the area fishing and being in the outdoors, and I've always looked at this spot on the map and wondered what it is. And when I heard uh, I had an opportunity to come out and find out really what it looks like to be in the site itself, it's one of those things I couldn't pass up. A lot of history is intertwined with the roughly 400 acres of terrain set aside here in Humphreys County. This was a large village or town that was at its height of occupation between about 1200 A.D. and 1350 A.D. A map of the site was sketched in 1878 by amateur archaeologist Edwin Curtis. They were Native Americans. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't put a name uh, with them. They were here long before Columbus discovered America, and they didn't have a written language. Uh, they are certainly in some way the distant ancestors of Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, other historic tribes, but these were not any of the historic tribes that, that we're familiar with. They, uh, they were gone before uh, Europeans discovered America and began putting the names of Native American peoples on maps and writing them down. Most of what so, we know about the tribe is through archaeology, although there's been very limited excavation on this particular site. These mounds help preserve a part of history that might have been plowed under if the state of Tennessee had not bought the property in 1971. They're not burial mounds. They would have been uh, flat-topped, steep-sided, rectangular uh, mounds that had structures on top of them. And when I say structures, I'm not talking about just a typical family house, uh, but, but large structures that uh, the political elite uh, probably lived in, uh, also uh, uh, communal meetings and ceremonies would have been held inside these structures. At some point, either accidentally or on purpose or through some act of warfare, those buildings would have been burned down. New mantles of mound fill were piled over them. The mound was enlarged and then a new building was uh, built on top of that, that new summit. So you may have a, like a layer cake effect of, of uh, of buildings that were burned and then mantles of mound added over the top of them. Formerly, there were as many as 20 mounds uh, along the ridge uh, on the other side of the road. Only two of them are left. Uh, the majority of them were, were destroyed by looters. Since the name of the tribe is long lost, historians made one up, calling them the Mississippians. It's a reference to prehistoric tribes that made their homes near the Mississippi River and its tributaries. Two rivers, the Duck and the Buffalo, flow into one another just below the village site. We're also located at the first major shoal on the Duck River, which would have made it a very convenient place to uh, have a fish weir. At that time, we would have had a number of species living in the Tennessee River that would have made spawning runs uh, up these smaller rivers like the Duck River. Uh, and Native Americans certainly would have been aware of when that happened. And when you had those events, they could harvest literally thousands of pounds of fish a day. The rivers were the highways of the day. And so you have a number of rivers that converge within very close proximity of where we're, we're standing right now. Canoes were the mode of transportation, and there's evidence the people here traded with tribes as far away as the Gulf of Mexico and Lake Superior. Some of what we know about the Native Americans living in the area is because of the Duck River Cache, 
a large collection of artifacts discovered in 1894. It is a, an assortment of uh, very large and elaborate uh, stone tools that were not utilitarian tools. They had some, some ceremonial significance to them. One of the most common things in the cache are these long knives. Uh, sometimes the archaeologists call them swords. They would not have been for just average utilitarian use. Uh, if you needed to skin a deer, that's not what you would have used to have done it with. There are stone tools in the shapes of raptor claws, uh, in the shapes of turtle, and the shape of a mace, which is a sign of power for Mississippian chiefs. They were probably more designed to kind of express the political and religious power of the owner of those items. The Duck River Cache also includes a male stone statue, referred to as Adam, which is now owned by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. There's something about seeing one of those ancient artifacts where the last person that touched that was, you know, millennia ago. So just being in close contact with something where the last person that used that, made that, you know, sat down on the dirt and made that out of a large piece of rock and now it's in a museum, it's impressive. Nature provided everything they needed from rocks for making tools or weapons for war, clean water with plenty of fish, lots of turkey that still scamper across the landscape today, fertile land for growing crops with time left over for fun. If you notice the area inside the, the enclosure of mounds is extremely flat, which is not typical topography for this part of Tennessee. And that seems to have been artificially leveled, uh, and that would have been a plaza area where dances would have been held, communal uh, events, and, and also the Native American ball game was probably played in that, in that plaza area. The modern sport of lacrosse apparently evolved from a much rougher version played by the Native Americans. But then, they were just gone, leaving behind a land that had given them so much. Scientists now know what happened. This site and, and many, many others uh, seem to have been abandoned very, very suddenly at about 1350 A.D. There is now some good evidence that that coincides with a major drought. Uh, it lasted for 20 years, and at least half of those years, you, the drought would have been severe enough to have called total crop failure. And these sites, for the most part, were never reoccupied after that. Link Farm State Archaeological Area is under lock and key. Tours are offered at various times of the year through Johnsonville State Historic Park. You can go to their website for information about upcoming events. There are seven archaeological areas across the state of Tennessee. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation, educating viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure, with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens. And from Tennessee State Parks, where you can camp by the riverside, retreat to the mountains and escape the busyness of life. From Memphis to Kingsport, you'll find the perfect adventure in Tennessee State Parks. Wildside is produced in association with Rockwater TV.